I want you to turn with me to the sixth chapter of Matthew, and Jesus is speaking. And he says this, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and materialism. Jesus said that. You've got to make up your mind. Now, first, a Christian is a person who has made a choice. Secondly, a change has taken place in his life. And thirdly, he's accepted a challenge. And I want to make those the three things I want to emphasize. First, he's made a choice. All the way through the Bible, we're asked to make a choice. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden made the wrong choice. They rebelled against God. They chose to build the world without God. And they made a mistake, a terrible, tragic mistake, and we're paying for it today because all the problems in the world today, including death, comes from the fact that our first parents broke God's law and passed it on to Cain and Abel, their children. They, Cain became a murderer and passed it on to you and me. And we're all capable of sin and we all sin. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in sin. We're sinners by choice. We're sinners by practice. Every choice we make affects others. Moses, before he died, said to all the people of Israel, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life and both you and your children will live. Choose, he said. He said to the people of that day, you have to make a choice. And a little bit later, the next man that followed him was named General Joshua. And Joshua, the 24th chapter, had all the people of Israel before him at Shechem. And he said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve yourself? Choose, he said. And then he said, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And Elijah was a great prophet of God. And he once had 450 prophets of Baal, who, who was a heathen god. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long are you going to halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Christ is who he claims to be, follow him. Because I tell you this, if Christ is not who he claims to be, we're in trouble. I don't see any hope in the world at all. And the only hope is Christ. Yes, you have to make a choice. Jesus said, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. He said only a few people are on the narrow road that leads to heaven. The vast majority are on a broad road that leads to judgment, destruction, and hell. Which road are you on? It's what you do about Christ that counts because, you see, Christ came to die on the cross and the cross becomes the door. It becomes the gate. And if we'll enter that narrow gate of the cross and the resurrection and say, yes, Lord, I believe, I turn from my sins, I'm willing to change my way of living, and we enter the narrow road, It'll be rocky and rough and tough, but at the end is heaven. And while on that road, there's a new resource and a new power and a new joy and a new love that God gives you. Now, secondly, a, a true believer, a true Christian, is a person who has made a change in his life. And that's done by the Holy Spirit. The moment you receive Christ, the Spirit of God comes to live in your heart and it says in 2 Corinthians, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away, behold all things become new. You become a new person and he's the one that does it. He performs that act in your life. 
Yes, a true believer is one in whom a change has taken place. Has a change taken place in your life? You see, you act the way you believe. The Bible is clear to change from a defeated, problem-oriented young person depends on first changing your mind. I'm going to ask you tonight to change your mind about God, about Christ. Because you see, our problems and emotional upsets and feelings and behavior and goals are all rooted in the wrong basic beliefs about how to meet our personal needs in life. Our problems with sex or with peer pressure. Christ can take charge of all that if you'll let him. And then a true believer is a person who has accepted a challenge. Jesus said, if any man will come after me and deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In other words, you deny self, your own selfish ambitions, your own selfish sinful pleasures. You deny that. And then you turn and take up a cross. What did he mean by that? He means that you are going to die with him. The cross was a place of executing criminals. He said, when you go back to your school, back to your neighborhood, back to your work, and tell them that you have received Christ, you may receive persecution. They may laugh at you. They may make fun of you. Your peers and your friends will maybe no longer have anything to do with you. You might lose some dates. You'll have to pay a price. Many of the people that followed Jesus when he talked about death and he said, I'm going to die, they quit following him. They didn't understand the deeper meaning of his death. They didn't realize that when he died on the cross, that was the only hope that they will ever have to get to heaven and to have their sin forgiven. Because when he shed that blood on the cross, that is the only hope that we have in this life or the life to come. Now I know that some young people, in America at least, resist the idea of a choice of any sort. It's been called the generation of the uncommitted. They don't want to be called narrow and they don't want to close their minds, but Jesus clearly taught that there are two roads and you have to choose which road. There are two masters and you have to choose which master you're going to surrender to. And there are two destinies, heaven or hell, and you have to make the choice. Because you see, God doesn't make the choice for you. God gives his son, he helps you to make the choice by sending his Holy Spirit to convict you, to speak to you. But ultimately, you make your own choice. He gave you a gift he didn't give to his other creatures. You can choose what kind of life you're going to live and there's nothing God can do about it. You can choose what you're going to believe and there's nothing God can do about it because he gave you a gift of free will. You can say, I will or I won't, I will or I won't. Which will it be for you? I will or I won't. That's the decision that you'll have to make. You see, there's death to every other choice. You cannot travel both roads. You die to one road when you go down the other. If you choose to marry one girl, you can ordinarily marry another. I said ordinarily. Life never allows that kind of neutrality. Jesus does not allow you to be neutral about him. Try to be neutral in politics and you soon are confronted with the ballot box. But some people do not want to be involved in their neighbor's problems. And there's a time when you must stand up and be counted. Jesus demands that you decide about him.